So hello everyone, my name is Zweida, I'm a student and an indie game developer, and in this talk, which has a very long title, I'm going to talk about how players and creators can kind of communicate through the game and how you can make personal games that are like very specific. And it's basically a post-mortem of a game I made, which is called Trust. So uh, Trust is a physical game. Uh, there's two envelopes. One is written open first, and on the other it's written open once you are done exploring. And so in the first one, you have lots of pieces of information about me. So you have uh, Facebook logs, you have some pictures, you have some friends' pictures, and so on. And it tells like the story of my life throughout my teenage years. And all the, it kind of tries to relate the whole complex feelings of nos nostalgia and so on. And the thing is, they are not dated. The pictures are not dated. You have no real information and no real like connection between the pictures. And so the player kind of has to make sense of it themselves. And uh, I made one, only one person play this game. And uh, this is the most important feedback that they gave me. I feel like I know you a lot better now. And it was very interesting for me, the fact that I didn't feel like showing this game to anyone else but them. And it made me think about personal games and how sometimes you don't need to make them for a large audience and you can be very, very specific. And indeed, I lied to that person at the beginning because when I made the game, I was thinking on just releasing it, re releasing it on itch and voila, and, and I wanted them to better test it. But really, that was the only person I wanted to really play the game. I was, I was only interested in their feedback because I wanted to communicate to them like it was a person I was getting close to and I wanted to know what they would think about my teenage years and I didn't know how to say it to them so I did what I did best and it was to make it through a game. And yep. Um, so there are games like uh, Cybel or Papers, Please, which are like can be quite personal and can be communications that like the creator wants to have with the player. But the thing is, they're meant for like a general public. They're available online and so on. But I'm interested in the idea of making games that are small and that can be played with everyone and that only a certain amount of people can empathize with. So, for example, when I released uh, Trust on itch.io, it, I didn't actually include everything because there were some things that I found were too personal. But that one person that did play the game, they, they had that available to them and it was very interesting to them. Um, and also, um, shuffling is a game mechanic in trust that I found really interesting because it made me realize also what I had, had trouble communicating with because when I had the little pieces of paper in the envelope, I, I was wondering whether I should shuffle them and provide the player with just a random selection of like the order or whether I should like place certain elements in a certain order to make them go through the story in a certain way. But as I shuffled, each time I would be annoyed that a certain piece of information was at the front. I was like, I, I don't want them to see this first. It will shape their whole experience, so I'm going to put it back. But then the other piece of information is at the front, and then I end up shifting. And I realized that my problem when I, when I was communicating with this person is not that I was afraid of saying something personal. It was more like I was afraid of miscommunicating in the wrong way, and so saying certain things first and so that they wouldn't understand me. So through me making a game, I was able to really understand which part of the communication with this person I was having trouble with. And uh, what is more, because I ended up leaving the game fully shuffled without any of like my own like involvement in it, I felt like I was more distanced from it, so the game existed by itself, and so I was able to feel as if I was less communicating with the person and the game was doing the communication for me, so I've, I felt safer of like sharing certain things with them. Um, questions. Uh, throughout the development, there were also a few questions that allowed me to see what, how the development went. So for example, I wondered whether the game would actually alienate us or bring us closer because there's the whole problem that the player might totally misunderstand what I meant through certain pages and I did not put anywhere in the game that they should talk to me about it so maybe they would just decide that the game is a closed experience in itself they would end up not really communicating with me about it and end up having a totally different idea of who I am as a person which was problematic but then again was it a price to pay and 
again, uh, as I said, the, the games like Paper Space and so on, they, they're quite general and they're open to interpretation. But then again, with this game, I want to make something very, very specific. So if the person interprets the game differently, does that mean that I failed? Because I really wanted to make something precise and make them understand something specific about my life. When I was uh, uh, writing this micro talk, a person uh, on Twitter actually contacted me and said that they had made a game called Blue for one specific person, and they said that it ended up being the most important game I ever made, quote. And they compared it with a mind palace that they update regularly, and that reflects of how they feel uh, in a certain moment. And even though everyone can play it on each I.O., it's still something that only one person can truly understand, the person that this uh, creator was trying to communicate with. And so games uh, that are personal are made all the time, but they're always adapted to fit a wider audience. And that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, you're releasing it on, on a platform where you want everyone to be able to play it. But I'm interested in making very small games that are personal and very specific. So here are three games that are quite popular, and they're really good. Like, I love them a lot. But imagine what if they were slightly different? Uh, what if the prototype for Downwell had levels that actually represented anxieties that the player was having related to the relationship they had with another person, and they showed it through the game? Uh, what if the beginner's guide was sent out only to Coda? What if her story was uh, about a person wanting to tell the story of a relative that was struggling with some kind of mental breakdown down or something. Just the idea of changing these games and make them slightly different and not accessible to everyone. And the second envelope, which I didn't actually talk about, the first one containing all the pieces of information, the second envelope contained only one piece of paper, which was a thank you for playing and a quote by Helen Keller, which is, life is either a daring adventure or nothing. So I, I like to encourage you to just take a few hours sometime when you're having trouble communicating and try to communicate with a certain person by making just a small personal game. Sometimes it can really help because, I mean, we're mostly game developers, so that means that's something that we're good at. So why not use communication as a tool for this? Thank you for playing. <laughs>